This edition of I Italy New York is brought to you by Dececo Pasta. Imported in the U.S. since 1893. And Baci Perugina Chocolate. Say I love you in the Italian way. in conversation with Walter Veltroni, the Young Italian Filmmakers Award at the New York Film Academy. Our Pasta Mania series, Rigatoni, Zucca e Salsiccia, a book review from Fred Gardafè. And join us at Cipriani for the NIAF Spring Gala. Questo film su Enrico Berlinguer mette insieme queste due passioni in qualche modo? È come... Sì, è, è come una parabola che si chiude, no? Il, le due grandi passioni di una vita, quelle che a 18 anni mi portarono a scegliere se, se fare cinema o se fare politica e scelsi di fare politica, poi qualche anno dopo mi hanno portato a, a riunire queste due dimensioni in un film dedicato alla mia passione politica. Io avevo 15 anni quando ho cominciato a fare politica e ho deciso di fare politica anche perché in quel momento c'era nel panorama politico italiano emergente la figura di Enrico Berlinguer che allora era vice segretario del Partito Comunista Italiano e da lì a poco sarebbe diventato segretario. Per me che vengo da una formazione politica, non, da una famiglia non comunista, io vengo da una famiglia democratica, mio nonno è stato eh, preso dai nazisti e portato in un carcere, torturato, per cui a casa mia si respirava l'aria della libertà. Berlinguer fu importante perché era il segretario di un partito comunista che stava cambiando quel partito comunista e lo stava cambiando soprattutto avviando una rottura nei confronti dell'Unione Sovietica. Per me, che amavo l'America, che ero affascinato dai Kennedy, quello era il problema fondamentale che si andava risolvendo, perché se fosse stato un partito filosovietico non avrebbe fatto per me. Per cui la, la grandezza di Berlinguer è stata questa. Berlinguer prende un partito comunista al 25%, fortemente segnato da un rapporto Unione Sovietica, lo porta al 34%, progressivamente allontanandosi dall'URSS, tanto che Berlinguer farà un discorso molto importante a Mosca che sul New York Times verrà messo in prima pagina e celebrato come il discorso nel quale un segretario di un partito comunista italiano parlava della democrazia come valore universale. Per cui io incontro Berlinguer politicamente e finisco a lavorare con lui, facevo responsabile dell'informazione quando Berlinguer era segretario del, del partito comunista, era una persona molto timida molto discreta, con un grande fascino, anche carismatico. Ma non triste? Non triste. Come ci teneva lui a specificare? Assolutamente non triste, molto appassionato, non so, del mare, del calcio, di passioni vere della vita, con una grandissima capacità di innovazione, con un grande senso di responsabilità, di cui darà dimostrazione in occasione della vicenda del terrorismo, e con un grande orgoglio italiano. Ecco, queste sono le cose che resero Berlinguer, come lei diceva giustamente, molto amato dai suoi, ma anche molto rispettato dai suoi avversari. Berlinguer è un segretario che subirà un attentato, segretario del Partito Comunista che subirà un attentato in Bulgaria, eh, organizzato col tentativo di eliminarlo, perché era un eretico rispetto all'Unione Sovietica. E quindi lui è stato fedele a quegli ideali di gioventù, però eh, diciamo nella forma particolare, studiata anche molto in America, a partire da Gramsci, che ebbe il comunismo italiano, che non è identificabile col comunismo sovietico. Naturalmente con le contraddizioni che derivavano dal mondo diviso in blocchi e quindi dalla scelta di stare allora da quella parte, ma è una contraddizione che Berlinguer risolve e questa è la sua grandezza politica. Quello che fece sì che lui fosse segretario di un partito comunista 
in un paese occidentale come l'Italia, però capace di raccogliere attorno a sé tante persone che non erano ideologicamente comuniste. Se dovesse decidere di fare un prossimo film su un altro leader politico che potrebbe <ride> considerare un padre di questa tradizione riformista che mette insieme queste visioni e queste culture politiche diverse, a chi lo vorrebbe dedicare? A un piccolo partito che nacque in Italia negli anni della Resistenza e poi nei primi anni della Repubblica, che è il Partito d'Azione, che era un piccolo partito però con una grande forza ideale. Quando nacque il Partito Democratico io mi sforzai di dire che quel partito non era qualcosa che aveva eh, diciamo, il suo riferimento nel passato, eh, ma era la, la traduzione in Italia di quella che io considero la più vitale delle culture eh, di giustizia sociale esistenti oggi in Occidente, che è la cultura democratica, che non, è, eh, che non si chiama democratica perché non si può chiamare in un altro modo, si chiama democratica perché ha un sistema di valori e questo sistema di valori ha nella tradizione del Partito Democratico americano un riferimento il più forte, il più vitale. La sua figlia maggiore è una documentarista, le ha dato qualche consiglio per questo documentario? <ride> Sì, quando, quando è venuta a Roma l'ultima volta, gliel'ho fatto vedere prima di sé, mi ha dato qualche consiglio ed erano consigli assolutamente giusti, corretti, insomma, lei ha naturalmente figlia di questo tempo, quindi ha eh, una concezione della, della velocità, della comunicazione, al tempo stesso però per fortuna eh, lei riesce a combinare la freschezza comunicativa al tempo stesso con una certa no, dimestichezza con la profondità delle cose. In generale i, i padri devono stare a sentire i figli, perché c'è un tempo in cui succede il contrario. No? I figli stanno a sentire i padri, poi arriva una stagione della vita in cui i padri devono avere l'umiltà di stare a sentire i figli. Let's see what's happening around the city. It's the third edition of a Young Italian Filmmaker Prize. It's a project that the Italian Cultural Institute meant to, to create, to give the opportunity to Italian, young Italian filmmakers to show their products here in New York. Uh, La Fondazione New York, which is also a sponsor uh, of this event, uh, and Yale University. It was very important to collaborate with the uh, New York Film Academy, which is an amazing institution. The New York Film Academy is one of the largest film schools and acting schools in the world. Uh, we were founded in 1992. The idea was to create a place where people that had the passion to make movies could learn and could be guided with really experienced and professional mentors to help them find their way into the industry. The international student body uh, for the Film Academy across the board, 50%. And we get many, many students from Italy. It's, it's kind of one of the largest international student bodies that we have we come from Italy. And uh, they're always fantastic students. I think that filmmaking uh, is in Italian blood. Because, I mean, really, that is, you know, when people think of film and classic cinema, they think of Italian film. And I think that's part of the culture there. I would love to see the students take the work that they do here and bring bring it back home and make those Italian films that Italy has become world-renowned for. The New York Film Academy has uh, many departments around the world, especially the one in Florence is the best in my judgment because you have the opportunity to shoot movies with this amazing background that Florence offers. We have summer camps as well as uh, fall and uh, spring courses workshop that last between four and eight weeks. So you have the opportunity to get the, the best of both worlds, an American education in an amazing Italian environment. We do this event every year. It's the first time we're doing it at the Film Academy. It's always been at the Institute, the Cultural Institute, um, the Italian Institute, um, and they always have these contests. Um, we love doing it. You know, it's, a, it's part of what the Film Academy does. We like to be connected to all the different institutions that want to celebrate film. Uh, the winner of the short movie is Manfredi Ucibello. Uh, he is from Florence. We will screen the, his movie, Storia di Nessuno. And the winner of the documentary movie is Davide Gambino from Milan. Uh, his movie's documentary is uh, Pietra Pesante. 
The third winner, the winner of the future film, will come later, so he's not here today. He will come later to attend a short course here at the New York Film Academy. New York è, è molto bello anche perché siamo nella patria del cinema, quindi venire qua è molto emozionante e molto bello. E oltre ad essere la patria del cinema, questa è anche la patria del cinema italo-americano. Allora, Storia di Nessuno è la, la storia di un, si, di un sicario che non è solitario ma piuttosto è solo e mentre fa, compie i suoi omicidi ci racconta della sua vita riflettendo sull'Italia di ieri e di oggi. Era un modo per raccontare in maniera metaforica alcuni problemi del mio paese. Mi, mi dispiace dirlo, però in Italia purtroppo sei giovane fino a 45 anni e nessuno è mai pronto a darti, a darti fiducia quando sei un under 30, però secondo me non è una grande difficoltà visto che adesso ce n'è bisogno, bisogno di cambiare tanto e quindi questo è un punto di forza forse. È ciò che insomma, mi incuriosisce e che in qualche modo mi suggestiona è il fatto che si possa parlare di pecore, di pastorizia, di, di pietre, di una Sicilia inedita molto chiusa nel centro, lontano dalle coste, dai luoghi turistici, eh, proprio qui a New York. Il mio film Pietra Pesante racconta la storia appunto di questo pastore artista Lorenzo Reina che mescola natura e arte eh, con la scultura che pascolando le pecore trova una propria chiave, una propria cifra stilistica nel mondo dell'arte e che porta, porta lui a scoprire un nuovo mondo, cioè riuscire a far dialogare le pecore e le pietre con l'universo, il suo teatro che lui ha costruito nell'arco di 30 anni portando con fatica queste, queste enormi massi che trova lì in loco costruire il teatro Andromeda, che è un teatro che è speculare alla costellazione di Andromeda. Cosa vuol dire vivere a Palermo e al tempo stesso lavorare sul cinema? Palermo e la Sicilia in genere è un, un ricettacolo di straordinarie energie creative. La Sicilia è, ha una densa storia, sia da un punto di vista storico-artistico che da un punto di vista antropologico, quindi contenitore di storie incredibili. Nello stesso tempo bisogna fare in modo che le storie non siano provinciali e chiuse solamente all'interno di, di quel panorama, ma che attraverso la Sicilia, attraverso dei personaggi siciliani, si possa parlare insomma, al mondo, sia per questioni produttive sia perché è importante guardare il proprio paese, la propria cultura da tantissimi punti di vista, sempre più diversi. We had a panel with the Italians, a Danish young filmmaker, Brazilian, Japanese, and all of them, they really believe in what they're doing. And this is especially important when you're dealing with young people. And it's especially important for us from Italy, where, you know, oftentimes we hear about young people who are not as driven as these young people. So it was extraordinarily inspiring. The beauty, I think, of having a conversation like this in New York is that we know that in New York, a lot of stuff is possible, not because it's a city of dreams, but just because there's just so many opportunities in New York, so many people, so many avenues that people can uh, try. So my feeling was, yes, they have a dream, a big dream, but they are in the right place for that dream. Dolce Vita. Let's meet our chef. This is pasta. Real Italian pasta. Pasta is serious business. Pasta is love. And pasta making is love making. Did you know that the best pasta makers clean the grains one by one? They just keep the heart. The best pasta is bronze-drawn and slow-dried at low temperatures. Remember, to make an excellent pasta dish, use excellent pasta. Today's recipe is rigatoni zucca e salsiccia. Zucca, or squash, was imported from America to Europe, thanks to Christopher Columbus. 
For a long time, it hasn't really been appreciated in Italy. It was used mainly by southern peasants and was considered poor people's food. Over time, however, it became a very popular ingredient for pasta dishes. And this variation, pairing squash with Italian sausage, is really a must. Ingredients. First, you'll need 24 ounces rigatoni, two sausages, 16 ounces of squash, one scallion, four fluid ounces white wine, four tablespoons extra virgin olive oil, four tablespoons grated parmigiano. Now that we're ready, let's see how Chef Luca Stefani does it. Preparation. Chop scallion and brown in a deep, thick pan with extra virgin olive oil. Remove sausages from skins and add them to the saucepan, stirring and mincing the meat with a fork. Let the meat cook for about five minutes until brown. Cube squash and add it to the pan, stirring in with the meat for a few minutes. Add white wine and cook for another five minutes until it evaporates. Lower the flame, cover, and let it cook for 10 minutes. Meanwhile, when the water comes to a boil, add coarse salt and toss in the rigatoni. Cook rigatoni for 14 minutes. When it's ready, don't strain the rigatoni. Just remove it from the pot using a large slotted spoon and add it to the saucepan. The starch in the water will help the sauce stick to the pasta. Cook over a high flame for a minute or so, stirring thoroughly. Before serving, add some extra virgin olive oil and sprinkle with grated parmigiano. Rigatoni, zucca e salsiccia may be paired with a red wine, not too dry, such as Lambrusco from central northern Italy. Remember, to make an excellent pasta dish, use excellent pasta. We reviewed this book. Interesting read that I came across uh, not too long ago is from uh, Joseph Natali. Joe Natali uh, was an editor. I met him. He was a professor uh, of English and an editor of a press, uh, Sunni series press, State University of New York. Thank God he's moved from academic writing, which I always enjoyed as academic writing, to pursuing interesting new ideas. He wrote this book called Travels of a New Gulliver, uh, and it's written really in that. Uh, that uh, style and the tone of uh, Gulliver, of Jonathan Swift's Gulliver Travels. Uh, what we have here is the descendant of Gulliver who comes upon this wish to travel. And as he travels, of course, he documents his ways. And he travels through all these strange worlds, a world in, uh, of a floating island, an island that floats above the earth. Um, it's called the Floating Island of Babel. Uh, and, and there he deals with language. Uh, in another uh, travel, he goes to uh, uh, a land where everybody speaks to each other and talks to each other and lives through cyber encounters. Uh, and another land, he goes where money is everything. Another land, he goes where money is nothing. He goes to this place called New Babylon. And first of all, it's a wonderful story of what happens to Gulliver. 
the new Gulliver. And it's an incredible comment on today's society, the same way that Jonathan Swift's Gulliver's Travels was a comment on Swift society. Quite often, he talks to the natives of these places that he goes to, and he decides that uh, he really uh, wants to leave the place. He can't stand being there. He doesn't find a place really where he wants to stay. In the end, he becomes a, a kind of an alcoholic uh, because he can't really take all this experience that he's gone through. And he kind of resigns himself to just, you know, putting out these ideas and sending them out. It's a, it's a fabulous read. I had not recently read Gulliver's Travels, but it's made me want to go back and reread Gulliver's Travels. So it's Travels of a New Gulliver, Joe Natalie, wonderful read. Coming up next, our exclusive event. You want to come watch with us? The National Italian American Foundation, in many ways, is really sort of the socio-political cornerstone of um, the Italian American discourse in this country because it is the one foundation that has strong connections to the Capitol, members of the Senate and the House of Representatives. But it is also an organization that significantly supports the arts as far as an Italian American organization is concerned. So it's con tanto di capello, as we say in Italian, our hats are off to them. Well, this is the third gala at Cipriani, but over the years, uh, the foundation has had several galas in New York City. Uh, New York is very important to uh, the National Italian American Foundation because New York is very important to the Italian American community. The um, concentration of Italian Americans in the greater New York area, including New Jersey and Connecticut, is significant. And so uh, that's why we're always interested and, and very um, supportive of our events here. This past year has been exciting for us. I mean, the last time we were here, we were looking at uh, our gala in October coming up. Now we have our final gala in the Washington Hilton in October. After that, we move into the Marriott, Warburton Park. So it's uh, 39 years at the Hilton. We're going to celebrate the ending of that tradition and the beginning of a new tradition this year. Expo 2015 is coming up, and we've been heavily involved in the U.S. Pavilion, so it's been a good year. Upside down when you holler, oh, this is such an amazing evening, and I am just so honored to be part of it. I know that my grandmother, who passed away just a few months ago, would be so proud to see that I am here. So it is, it is a culture and a heritage that is dear to me, and to be here tonight and to share the achievements of other Italian Americans is extremely special. What does it mean for you to be an honorary at this uh, Naya Fagala? Well, it's like a dream come true because uh, I'm, very, I'm very passionate about what I do. And for 25 years, I've been doing that on television, trying to educate uh, a national audience about what real Italian food is all about. There is no such thing as Italian food. There is only regional food. And this has been the mission of Ciao Italia over the last 25 years. So this is like a culmination of all the work that we've done over the last 25 years. A great moment of Italian-American music. It's, um, it, it's timeless music, very proud of our heritage. Um, and it's, it's not just Italian music, it's music for everybody. Makes you happy, makes you want to dance. It's part of my heritage, uh, not just my father's side, but my mother's side as well. And it's kind of in the blood, you know, my kids do it, we love doing it. I love to perform, I love to honor my father, my, our Italian heritage, it's what I do. The National Italian American Foundation, when it originally started, was to be the voice of Italian Americans in Washington and also improve the image and protect the image of Italian Americans in this country to really uh, make sure that we were respected for what we've contributed to the country. That's yesterday. The NIAF represents today uh, something that's important for this generation, and that is making sure they have an identity with their cultural heritage, but more importantly, uh, a way to connect with modern Italy and the importance of having a global perspective. So the linkage between Italy and the United States through a, this generation of Italian Americans 
and a generation that matches them in Italy is the most relevant part of our programming today. We really do look to find opportunities where we can highlight the mission of our foundation, which is supporting Italy in the United States and the United States in Italy. And where are the opportunities where we can show and highlight how we have one country, Italy, has contributed so much to the United States and how we have as a nation in the U.S benefited from that relationship. It was a lot of hard work. It was a sold out crowd. There was great passion, great energy. And now we're on to our next gala, which is in October, October 24th, 25th in Washington. And uh, we're all excited about that. So when you put your heart and soul in anything you do with the great passion of Italians and Italian Americans, it's very special. This edition of iItaly TV was brought to you by Colavita Extra Virgin Olive Oil. And Chirio Chopped Tomatoes. renowned Italian singer Fiorella Manoia. New York welcomes Nutella, a new bar at Italy. Pasta Mania series continues with Spaghetti alla Puttanesca. Tamburi reviews the untold story of Luigi De Bianco. Valeria Gollino presents her film Miele.